What's up guys, we have landed in Texas. We've never been to Texas before and it is gonna be the start of our Drift Week 6 journey. We are currently in a car park, about to pick up our rental because we're gonna have a support vehicle for the week. Today we're also gonna to travel to see our drift car, which is a little bit unusual. I've never driven one before. I don't think there is any. Oh, by the way, Jimmy's here. Hey Hello, guys. Man. Did you tell him what you got? Not yet. Oh, this is a whole big surprise. It's a big surprise. To be honest, I've never driven one. I've never seen one in Ireland or the UK, but huh. it's kind of the same as something else. It'll make more sense in a while. Josh is here carrying all my bikes because I'm filming. That worked out well yeah. for me. And Adam's got the rental car, which we got a little small rental car this time. Seems sound kind of mean. It sounds okay. Yeah. It's pretty big. It needs to be though, because it's gonna kind of carry all of our tools and all of our luggage. Jimmy's uh, with us today. He's gonna collect his car tomorrow. So we're gonna head to grab our car. All right guys, I want to take a second in today's video to thank today's sponsor, NordVPN. Let me tell you why NordVPN is something you should be using every day. As you guys know, we travel all over the world and we often use public Wi-Fi access, like in airports or hotels or wherever. And NordVPN hides our IP address and all of our information from hackers or people trying to steal our credit card bills so we don't get a nasty surprise when we order parts or something online. NordVPN is easy to download. You can put it on up to six devices, whether it's your laptop, your PC, or whatever. And they have over 5,500 servers in over 59 countries meaning they're the fastest VPN in the game, and that is speed tested. But my absolute favorite feature of NordVPN is one I've been using particularly on this trip to the USA. Now back home, I was watching a TV series, it's on Sky Go, and when I got here to America, I wanted to catch up on the next episode, and I couldn't because it's not available in this region. Quick change of my virtual location, and I was watching the rest of the series instantly. Now, this also works the other way around, that if you're at home, you can change your virtual location to another country and unlock tons of films, games, and movies that you wouldn't be able to normally access. That to me is worth its price alone. And because you guys are Drift Games fans, we've got an amazing deal from NordVPN to pass on to you. If you sign up now for a two year plan, you'll get an additional four months for absolutely free. And you've got a 30 day money back guarantee if you're not happy with the product. So remember, nordvpn.com forward slash Drift Games to avail of this now. Let's get back to the content. All right, so we've just arrived at Aaron's shop. We're not going to show you the car just yet because we've got some work to do to it before it goes to Drift Week. But Aaron, your garage looks like an Irish garage. Is that an insult or no, what is that? It means stuff is done. There's lots of oh. stuff being done. It's busy. get started. Hello everybody. Welcome to Texas for Drift Week 6. Right now we're standing inside of a speaker, like a high-end audio speaker shop, which happens to also have car stuff in here. So this is our friend Ethan's shop. This right here is a Drift Week car that's getting ready. It's one of the more extreme cars that doesn't have Definitely. windows. It, had, it made like 700 wheel torque the other day and they were retuning it for pump gas for this trip. It has a big Jay-Z in here. Show me the engine real fast. Come on, Kenny. Oh, he's putting ski rack, or his roof rack. Yeah, so it's a big turbo Jay-Z. He had some problems where he had to add an extra wastegate the other day because he couldn't control it. So Jordan from RK Tunes told him just to cut directly in the exhaust housing. So he just did that and they just retuned the car and it worked. And they were able to go from like 28 pounds down to, I think 14 pounds. Over here, we have our German friends. They bought a Fox body, sight unseen, with a coyote motor, our angle kitting it up, stickering it up, and making this beautiful contraption work. They also have a 350Z outside, but they also have a Corvette. This Corvette did Drift Week 5? 5. Yeah. Yes. This is Flo with that car. Hi. Let's, oh, you missed this. You have to see one comedy thing. Is it the big turbo thing? Yeah. This is a little turbo. You can see the exhaust piping here. This, this is outrageous. This is obviously not the final routing, probably. This is not our car. This is one of the things up here at the shop, which is separate from us. It just happens to be another car shop. Um, this looks absolutely outrageous, I'm sure. A truck. It is a truck engine. So, so that's that's absolutely look ridiculous. Look at the size of the pipe for it. Yes. There you go. I thought oh. you would laugh. And I don't know if you guys ever do this in Ireland, but uh, they just turn the exhaust man and folds around, like little short tube headers, and just, Sorry, straight up yep, and just 
bolt that on here. Every project car eventually becomes a shelf. So like every you have, flat surface in the yes, garage becomes yeah. a shelf. Everything becomes a shelf. So this is a Jay Z car, uh, Jay Z S13 turbo, obviously turbo. We've had this thing for more than a decade. This is True's personal car. It used to be an SR high comp car, like 12 and a half to one or something like that SR. And we used to have a whole fleet of high comp SRs and then they all blew up and we just got sick of SRs. It's a shame. Yeah. SR or no car. I'm not too sure about that Here's one. Here's the extra <laughs> rental car. So this car is just in case the rental cars break. We have one backup. This is like, you know, yeah. in Top Gear when they have the little car that follows them around the whole It is town. totally going to follow us around. And it'll be like, if you end up in the white 350, you've had a bad day. No, we never need that. Now you say the best till last. This is one of my new toys. This all we've done is done like burnouts and stuff on. We have so so explain to people who know nothing about oh, sorry. NASCAR. So NASCAR. This is an actual NASCAR. Yes, it's a 2003 Ford Taurus. It has a I think it's an R452 Roush Yates uh, Ford V8. It makes. Uh, somewhere between 680 and like 800 or something depending on the trim of the motor and all these different things. It revs to, when Roush Yates sold these to the public, they set the rev limiter at 9300. These are, well, this and this, you're making them as drift cars. Yes, these are drift cars, specific drift cars. Everything including the hood is tethered. Do you I see these tethers? I was just going to say the tethers on the suspension. Yeah. Everything has tethers. Both of these cars take about one minute to raise up to like max height and lower. You just toss a impact right there on every piece of the like every coil and you just run it up and down on these perches imagine lowering a car like that just with an impact gun that's very it takes cool literally a minute to do all four corners if you know you can open the hood and do it so how much was this one that one was eight thousand this one was seven thousand but the point is is you have literally like a 680 plus horsepower dry sump v8 with a dog box that has a jericho four speed it was running like all that stuff is less than just like a KA S13 now. So I'm saying all you car nerds that are Japan nerds, like I was into Japan stuff forever ago because it was cheap and it was fun and like all these things, they suck now. They're terrible cars. Get rid of your S chassis. Oh, yes. They're Sell awesome. them car. to me. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we checked out the workshop where Aaron is and now we're going to show you guys the car we're going to be driving. It's a car that I've never driven before. I don't think anybody in Ireland or the UK has ever driven before. I'm not too sure if they're even in Ireland or the UK. I maybe saw one in Ireland once. But it's something different, but it's kind of familiar. It's this. An Infiniti G37S, which is also, underneath all this, a 370Z. So it's basically the same as a 370Z, but it's a little bit more luxurious, which means it's a little bit heavier. But this one's been modified before we arrived. I'm gonna show you guys around the car. So it's got some new wheels all around to make it look a little bit more stancy. This car has high mileage, but it's had been taken care of pretty good. A few things, a few dents on it. It's got all the basic mods. So basically you've got a energy bucket seat to stop you rolling around when you're drifting. It's got a Sticky handbrake, which is here nicely, actually very nicely and subtly placed on the mm. inside. Of the that's actually a, that's a clean install. Very clean install. Uh, we've got a snap off steering wheel, so you get in there with the car very easily, and that's pretty much all it is. It looks sporty, it looks like you have a decent job out of college, <laughs> you know? <laughs> First luxury car. Yeah, 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 it's gotta be sporty, but it's still luxury. Don't touch it, Adam. Just, Don't, what, are you, what are you doing? Like, my side's stuck, I don't want to use it. <laughs> This is a good base for, for a drifty car because it's NA, which means not as much complicated things to go wrong. It's a fairly large displacement, which means that it's not going to be pushed on the turbo really high, and the parts are easy enough to get for them. And they crash really well. That's a good one. Why would you say that? That's, That's important. <laughs> Maybe for you. I said I'm gonna be, <laughs> we're going to be James Dean's punching bag all, all yeah. drift week, so something that takes like a nice 
Nice little hit. Nice little hit. Little rub. What's it called in wrestling? The person that goes in there just to make someone else look good. Oh, a jobber. A jobber. A jobber. We are the jobbers. Jobber week. boys. Jobber boys. Jobber boys. <laughs> we are. We are there to just stand there going. The genie and jobber yeah. boys. Yeah. Every photo you see of James being close to people will be a terrified face of me and Jimmy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> don't spin. We're gonna put livery on the car. How to make it fast? Make it look fast. And in my head, this is gonna be a smooth process on both, but it's probably not going to be. But uh, I'm predicting four hours. What's four your hours? What's your prediction? It's. I think two hours we'll have it done. I think it's, we've started in the daylight, it's gonna be dark by the time we're finished. Let's get to it. All right, so we have got the decals delivery on the car. I think it looks quite good. Came out really nice. Like we wanted to go subtle with the car, but still add a bit more driftiness to it that it doesn't look like we're getting picked up from, you know, a drift session by our dad. So luxury car that has a little bit more drift on it. I think it came out really, really well. This is the design we're going off here. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's by a designer called Square Design. So we're working with him on all of our stickers and our merch and our liveries and everything going forward. If you guys want to check him out on Instagram, he's really, really talented and does really, really good renders. So we actually had a render of this car done up. I think he absolutely smashed it. So it's dark now and it's late. So it's no point showing the car to you guys now. Why don't we just wait until the morning in the Texas sunshine and show it to you in its full glory. Well, well, in America, <laughs> that's up pretty. Apparently, you're not allowed to work on the cars in America unless you have one specific tool, right? Which is this. This is what you have to have. Oh, yeah. You have to work on the cars. You're right now, anyway. They're hard hat. Yeah, they protect you from it. The oh, fall, definitely, so. right? Up. Taking a short pit stop in our day. Dave wants to pick up a few Corvette parts. So, back home, we had these things called motor factors that are usually, well, absolutely tiny but as you know in america everything is bigger and better so we are here at summit racing and i mean this is just ridiculous and in the car park just a casual drag car i'm sure most of you have heard about this place but can't really put it into words how big this is. This is the biggest car parts supermarket I have ever seen. Big American flag, big American car parts shop. So these are essentially race engines, just just on the shelf, right? Like literally ready to ready to buy. Look at all the bits on like you buy carburetors, pistons, valves, like everything you want. Fire extinguishers, like gearbox blankets for drag racing in case drag blank like drag parachutes. On the shelf. This is nuts, and we've only become the on the first corner. I am so glad I have no money because I would have spent it all. Fortunately, the food stalls in SEMA cleared us out because it was about 74 euros for a drink. They make putting nitrous on a car pretty easy. Turbo goes in the middle of the event. And off the, off the shelf turbo. There you go, it's turbo. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not that bad. So we bought some stuff. We got some uh, some oil. We got a very cheap tool set. We got a jerry can. We got some cable ties. After that, we're running wherever we need to get, whatever we need to get. Yeah. So this is enough for Wayne to look like he's a mechanic, even though it's got one four hundred and seventy thousandth of the tools he'd have back home. But it's enough that if we've no problems, we'll be able to run the car. So let's see how we get on.
Alright, so we've just driven the car three hours north from Dallas. We're heading towards Cam Acres. It's the first track on Drift Week. And so far, so good. G37 doing okay. It drives very nice. It's got a little bit of rubbing from the wheels being a little bit too big, but that's normal. It's quite loud. But if you stay off the throttle, it's not too bad. A little bit of a water leak under the car, but it's not coolant and it's not anything from the engine. So we think maybe the car was left outside in a storm and maybe the sunroof, uh, like the pipes that basically relieve all the water from the car, maybe clogged up or something. Don't know, hopefully it just evaporates and just gets rid of it after a while. But uh, we're heading to the track here now. It's our first taste of Drift Week. We've got the boys in front of us in the expedition and uh, today will be a real test of the car to see if it can get through this. But, uh, and also, we're gonna drift with everybody today, so hopefully it goes smoothly. Like this wouldn't be possible without our amazing partners at Drift Games and one of those is Mobile One Oil. They've been with us for years and keeping us on track for years. We run their oils and lubricants in every single streetcar and drift car we have and that's why they say so reliable. Now on a trip like this you need proper oil to keep your car cool and also running perfectly. So I would suggest Mobile One Oil because it's the best in the business. They also run Formula One teams. So if you want to check out their full range of products in Ireland, check out oil.ie. Okay, boys and girls, it's time we explained what Drift Week is. So essentially 40 cars, they're all going to be drift cars and street driven, travel across on this particular trip, Texas and the Midwest, go into multiple tracks doing multiple drift days. So there is 16 days, there's 10 days of drifting in that, and there's six travel days in between. Cars could not go in a trailer, they must be driven to and from the track. Even though you can have a support vehicle like we do with our Ford Expedition, you can put your gear and your luggage and all that stuff in it, you gotta make sure that the car gets to and from the track and is fixed at the track or on the street. It's a bit of a challenge, it's a lot of driving, especially when you're driving all day on the track and then you gotta drive almost all night to get to the next track. And this is our first track, Cam Acres, so it's a short track, quite twisty, it's custom built for drifting and it's actually for sale at the minute, I think it's for like 1.6 million dollars. So we're gonna go out, shake the car down, I've never driven the car before, I've never driven on this track before. So because you've got so much time, we've two days on the circuit with multiple layouts, best thing we can do, do some easy laps to start with and build ourselves up to some awesome tandems later on. Right, so it's time to get in the car, get the helmet on, first day of Drift Week, here we go. Car's good, feels good, a lot of transitions, very snappy, like left, right, left, right, left, right, and then some of the corners, if you had a bit more power, you could link them, but you kind of have to fire this thing in, but it's a lot of fun, but the tires are getting super hot. Like There's still smoke coming from the tires. It's a lot of fun though, and the car handles great. Mine's a little bit overlock, and 
the power steering was getting heavy towards the end just from all the lock to lock it's like very hard on the car so I think I did three laps in a row there I think two is probably enough and let it cool for a lap and should be A1 the car is amazing though I'm, like to be fair it handles just like a 350Z but it's a little smoother I think because the wheelbase is longer it's tougher on the snappy ones but on a big corner it's so planted like it's brilliant and the handbrake works good everything works good top job Aaron and the boys here we go, it's going to be the second setup, so we put more pressure in the tires, change the alignment, let's see if she's better. today I'm using a lot of handbrake just so I don't go off the track because the outside of this track looks so sketch. I would say it's two foot of drop off yeah and that's no exaggeration. taking it easy you seem to have got into a free car train straight away I did and my power steering is overheating it feel how, feel how tough that is to steer yeah there's no power steering there yeah so we got a, a power steering overheating well look lucky we have a way in we have because we have no idea what we'd have to do for that a few moments later okay so we thought that steer would get heavy because it was overheating from doing so many transitions and we were gonna get a cooler for it but it turns out in the last lap it got heavy through the first corner so I hadn't driven the car in like 20 minutes, half an hour, it was cool and the minute I initiated the steering wheel went on lock and then it just jammed there so Wayne reckons that it's the power steering pump is gone because it's failing rather than overheating so we just learned that it's the most awkward of all the VQ engines to get one for because it's different than a 370, different than the both 350Z, DE and HR so now we're going to try and call a motor factor somewhere and see if we can get one on the shelf and try and get it back in the car for later today. So day one of Drift Week, well, at least if we fix the problem today, it should be fixed for a while, but maybe we'll just buy two, I don't know. But um, yeah, first problem, and it's a silly, annoying one too. So um, the car doesn't really drive at all without power steering. It's the full Drift Week experience. Well, actually, no, it's this. You, you actually want these problems a bit later on, not, not right now, but. I'm working this early. You're doing a little bit, right? Yeah, I'm getting dirty on the first day. Got your fresh new t shirt on. Yeah, they're not. They're even 
Yeah. Rocking the S15T. Nice new clothes on. You're gonna make him get all dirty yeah. now. He's got his Levi's. Your shirt tucked in. That's just, tucked in. I, wa I saw him take the sticker off the pants ten minutes ago. Yeah. All right, so we got a power steering pump ordered from O'Reilly's Auto Parts. It arrives at half seven in the morning, which we're gonna go collect, put back on the G37, and then we're gonna put a power steering cooler on the car as well, just so we can eliminate that problem. So this should be fine tomorrow. But the boys that were also renting cars from Lone Star Drift are some Australian guys, and they said, why don't you take this Z with Wisefab out for a couple of laps. We bolted on our wheels, and I'm gonna go basically do four, five, six laps just to finish the day on a high and hopefully get some good laps in because the laps today were a bit sketchy because of tire pressures and because of the power steering problem. So this car should be fun to drive. So let's go. Well done, Josh. Big, big door pulling guy. Look at that. Just so strong. Day. Gives us something to build on for tomorrow, right? You don't want a complete drift week in one day now. No. But it's nice to know, leaving the track on the first day, that we can do the track. Could I do it better? Yes. Could I use less handbrake? Yes. But tomorrow, in the G37, we'll hopefully master it by the end of the day. And do some tandems. It's all about the tandems. I didn't want to do, I didn't want to do too much tandems in the car because I was testing it earlier. And then, this isn't my car for the week, so I didn't want to risk it. So. I'm happy it's in one piece. I was going to say that is the first time I've heard you be sensible with drifting. First time ever. It will get worse as the week goes on, believe me. <laughs> he promises you that. Alright guys, so that was day one of Drift Week and our prep for Drift Week. Car looks good, but it's not running good right now. We need to get up early in the morning to get a power steering pump. Wayne has, Wayne has the car all stripped and ready to go. So hopefully I'll be doing cool laps like I did in the 350 today in the G37 tomorrow. So join us on the next episode for more thrills, spills, hopefully some good drifts on Drift Week 6. We're having a blast so far. All the boys are ready to throw it out tomorrow. Tomorrow is all about tandems, so I'm looking forward to it. Join us on the next episode. If you don't subscribe to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. And once again, thank you to all of our sponsors and partners who make trips like this possible. And you guys who are also buying stuff on our merch shop, which is allowing us to live the dream. So you guys are absolute heroes. And we've got a mystery box for Christmas coming very soon as well with some big prizes. We're not gonna let you know too much, but stay tuned to the next couple of videos to be ahead of the herd to find out about how you can win some crazy stuff with Drift Games. All right, we're gonna go back to the hotel, chill for the evening. See you guys on the next one.